Glory to God. Hallelujah. We greet everyone in the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'd like to invite the church to stand up in reverence to the word of the Lord. I'm going to read on Matthew. Matthew chapter 21. We're going to read from verse 9 to verse 11. Matthew 21. From verse 9 to 11. It is written like this in the word of the Lord. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed Christ out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Lord, we praise you, your holy name, for this fellow moments of fellowship. And please, Lord, that in your word, once again, you may bless us in this place. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The word describes, in, it was already preached about many times, about the tri triumphant entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem. It was the fulfillment of the word of God or was a prophecy. And uh, Psalm 118 says that on this day, this day was the day that the Lord has made. It was a special day. It says that this day is a door so that the righteous may enter through it. And the righteous would enter through this door and would go through this day and it was going to be a day of rejoicement and happiness. And the word of the Lord, my brethren, says that this day this determined day has arrived. The fulfillment of that prophecy was the prophecy was being fulfilled at that exact moment in the Word of God. Says that inside of the city of Jerusalem when, when the multitude entered with Jesus, there was there a question from the inhabitants of Jerusalem. When they saw that all the that movement, the crowd coming in, they asked a question, and the question was, who is this? And it, this expression is interesting. Who is this? We have seen this expression in many places in the Bible. Once Jesus was with his, with his disciples in a boat, and there was a great storm there. And in the midst of that storm, when the man asked help to Jesus, Jesus, help us, save us. Then Jesus goes and reproaches the wind and reproaches the sea. And there was great calm in that place. And the disciples asked one another, Who is this? That even the wind and the sea answer he gives orders and, the or and they obey him. And up to that moment, they didn't know who was actually in the boat with them. They had not become aware 
of, of about the presence of that man in their midst. He was not only the son of a carpenter, or he was not a, 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 only a carpenter, but his presence on that place represented there the presence of God in their midst. Jesus was known as Emmanuel, and its meaning is God with us. And if God is with us, Christ in us is the hope of glory, is the hope of eternity. But the disciples, they had not known Jesus that well. So it was necessary a great storm and water entered into the boat and they had no other help in order for them to be able to understand who was beside them. And then they asked, who is this that even the seas and the wind obey him? And later on, when Jesus comes to that, that crowd that was with him in the boat, and he asks a question, who are people is speaking about me? And they answered, that you're a prophet, and that you're this, that you're that. that. And then Jesus asked to his disciples, how about you? What do you say that I am? And the word says, my brethren, that Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, and man can only say that, that who, or man can only say who Jesus truly is, is if man is filled with the Holy Spirit. If God reveals to man, then man will have an answer, a clear answer and truthful answer. So when God, when Jesus asked to the disciples, God revealed to Peter and he answered, you are Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus answered, Blessed are you, Simon, because it was not flesh or the blood, but it was the Father who has revealed it to you. And he, he was saying that, he was showing that the blessed ones are the ones who are going to receive the revelations, the revelations from God regarding His Son, Jesus. And even Jesus Himself speaks, says who Jesus was. When Jesus was baptized, He revealed it to a man called John the Baptist. Here is the Son of uh, the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world. But when after Jesus was baptized, the testimony was, was not of John the Baptist. The testimony was of God Himself, His Father. He says, This is my blessed Son to whom I'm pleased. So then the disciples became aware of who Jesus was. But there was a cry out there in Jerusalem that still didn't know who Jesus was. And if we look today, there is a large crowd inside of Jerusalem. When we're speaking about Jerusalem, we're speaking about the spiritual Jerusalem that still doesn't know Jesus. When the storm comes, when the movement comes, then it keeps asking themselves, who is this? Who is this? But the word of the Lord, my brethren, says the following, that there were, there were two crowds and the multitudes, there were two multitudes, and then afterwards it shows that there were two multitudes, the ones that were going ahead, there was a multitude that was going ahead of Jesus, and there was another multitude that was following Jesus. These two multitudes, they knew who Jesus was. It was not necessary to ask to any of them who Jesus was, because all of the ones who were ahead of Jesus and the ones who were after Jesus, they knew who Jesus was. And because they knew who Jesus was, and that 
What day was that? What, uh, what special moment was this that they began to they began to cry out? And the cry was the following: Hosanna. Hosanna means save us, Lord. We ask you. We implore to you, Lord, save us. So it was a great crowd that was following Jesus, that was ahead of Jesus. That crowd was pleading. They were crying out for salvation. Because Jesus, when we, when we analyze Jesus' name, that's what it is. The name Jesus means salvation. So then all of them there, they were pleading for salvation in Christ Jesus. That's why the two crowds, they were pleading, Hosanna, save us, Lord, we ask you. Save us, Lord, we implore to you, Lord. So it was a request that they were making for salvation because the desire of these two multitudes was to be saved. And my brethren, today is not different. The Bible says, believe in Jesus, you will be saved. But we will be saved only when we enter with Jesus in Jerusalem. On that great day, the day of the visitation, the day in which this door will, will be opened for the ones who have been washed and redeemed by the blood of Jesus, justified by His blood, the ones who will enter into Jerusalem. So then the multitudes there, they were, they were going ahead of what multitude was going ahead of Jesus? There's a song that said, How many righteous, valiant one, heroes of faith that gave their lives, but they fell, but they fell while standing. But so the Bible speaks about the faithful, the valiant one that have been justified by the blood of Jesus, and that they gave their lives for this project. They gave this life so that they would be able to reach to this moment, this glorious moment in which they will enter with Jesus in Jerusalem. And they preached the Word of God. They pleaded, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, we ask you. My brethren, this word, Hosanna, that they it stops being only being only a plea. But at that moment in which they entered into Jerusalem, it became uh, an adoration, uh, an expression of gratitude. So when they said, Hosanna, they were saying, Lord, we thank you for this so great salvation that, that was able to reach us. We thank you, Lord, that because through it, we now can enter into the gates of eternity. Lord, we praise you because we are entering to the heavenly Jerusalem with our King, with our Savior, with our Lord. And they pleaded, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. So then the multitudes, they were pleading to the Son, Jesus, to the Son of David, to the Son of the Promise, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And it says more, Blessed is He who comes. So, in other words, blessed the one who comes. He uses the expression, the one who comes. Jesus is coming. And He is the Blessed One. So, He is the one who blesses. He is the one who saves. He is the one, He is the rescuer. He is the plan of God for my life, for our lives. And He says, Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. So, in other words, He is the one who is coming. Jesus is coming as an order of, of God, by decree from God, as a manifestation of the love of God towards our lives. Jesus is coming. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And He is the Blessed One. He is the One who blesses. He is our Savior. 
come in Hosanna in the highest. Why Hosanna in the highest? There's a song that's, that says, it's from, from above that comes our victory. I raise my eyes to the mountains where my help will come from. My help comes from above, from the Lord that made heaven and earth. That's why Hosanna in the highest. Hosannas are also saying in eternity as gratitude, as a praise and adoration to the Lord for this so great salvation. The word says, and when he, at, he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitudes that was following Jesus, they have an answer to Jerusalem. My brethren, the multitude that follows Jesus, the ones who enter through the gates that are walking with Jesus towards Jerusalem, they have a word. They have an answer to the word, to the world. The answer to the world is Jesus is coming. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This one is the blessed one. He is the Savior. He is the Son of David. He is the King. But when they came before the people of Jerusalem that didn't have knowledge about the pro prophecy because they were not paying attention to the moment in which they were living, the fulfillment of that prophecy, the multitude have an answer. And it's interesting that in the beginning it speaks about multitudes and now it uses the expression the multitude is just one. So then the multitude so went out of plural and turned into a singular because it's only one. Why? Because it is one body. The Bible says that in the rapture the dead, the one that went out first, they will resurrect first before the church and then we'll meet with them in the, in the clouds and we'll forever with them. And now it speaks about a multitude from every tongue, tribes and nations. And the multitude said, this is Jesus. But now he didn't speak that to the people that this man who was entering to Jerusalem he was not this Jesus, the son of David. He was not the blessed one that comes in the name of the Lord. But now the crowd, the multitude, identifies this Jesus, the Savior, the blessed one who came in, comes in the name of the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the King of Kings. These people, do you know how was he was identified? The prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Why they said prophet from Nazareth of Galilee? Can anything good come from Nazareth? Nothing. He was the despised one. The people, that people turned their face to him. There was no beauty on him for us to desire him was the humble, the most humble. It's, it is on Isaiah 53. It is entering here in Jerusalem for the fulfillment of the prophecy for you. He is Jesus of Nazareth of Galilee. The one that was despised by everyone. Nazareth of Galilee. Do you know what those words mean? Jesus of the Gentiles. He came to the ones to his, but the ones who were his didn't accept him. You remember the parable of the invitations that were made, but the ones who received him were became children of God. The, the ones who believe in his name. The crowd that followed Jesus was the multitude that believed in Jesus that received the power to be made children of God. They entered with Jesus in Jerusalem. My brethren, this multitude that came with Jesus is the multitude of the blessed ones. It's the multitude of the ones who washed their garments and washed it, whitened it out with the blood of the Lamb. 
It was the multitude that was prepared. They were vigilant. They were paying attention. They had uh, girded waists. They had lit lamps. And they were not neglecting the plan of God upon, for their lives. This was the multitude that we will inherit in eternity, that will arrive in heaven. And the Lord was showing tonight through His spiritual gift, especially a man. This man was not paying attention, was distracted regarding the prophetic moment in which we are living, regarding his own salvation. And he had already received from the Lord all the resources in order to walk with security in his presence and to arrive at the des desired destination, which is eternity of the Lord. He received training. He received the equipment. But my brethren, the Lord has prepared all things. We are being trained for 2,000 years. The people is being trained. The Bible is our manual of survival, a manual of instruction. All the necessary resources, the means of grace, the Lord has made available to us. And we cannot, at this moment, not pay attention to this so great salvation. And the Lord says that this man was running a risk, risk of death. And the desire of the Lord, my brethren, is that no one will die. The desire of the Lord is that you live and live in His presence forevermore. The Lord was also showing that the church had a trumpet And that each person here, each brother or sister here, had a trumpet. They had to sound this trumpet everywhere, every location. And a few said that they didn't know how to play the trumpet. Sometimes we really don't know how to, s to blow on the trumpet. And at a point in time, Jesus was concerned with the disciples. That's how we are going to do this. Jesus said, do not be worried. Because on that moment, the Holy Spirit of God will speak through you. Maybe we are not able or have the means. You don't feel like we are capable. But God trusted a trumpet to you. And that people that was following Jesus, they were there proclaiming, they were the arrival of Jesus into Jerusalem. They were with Him. And at this moment in which we are living, is a moment to proclaim that our, our King comes, that Jesus is returning. And you, my brother and sister, you are blessed ones. You are blessed ones because Jesus is present in our midst. And the multitude that was going ahead already have played their role. They have already proclaimed. And now the second multitude is us. And we should enter with Jesus also proclaiming. Save us, Lord, we ask you. For your so great for your so we ask for your so great salvation. We glorify your, or your holy name because you have been, you called us to your project of fraternity. And when he, when he entered into Jerusalem, the multitude, the ones who were going ahead and the ones who were following, he said, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We see here, Hosanna to the King Jesus. Hosanna to the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. So we see here the presence of the Trinity. The Trinity was present when the people of God enters into Jerusalem. So my brethren, every day the Lord has loved us. He has taken care of each one of us. We're beginning yet another year. Today is the second. Today is the second of 2000, uh, January of 2020. We have 
300 and uh, a little more than 360 days to proclaim that Jesus is alive and he is returning that the blessed of God is preparing his people to enter Jerusalem the people of Jerusalem didn't know this but they became aware because the multitudes they were there saying Hosanna 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 to the son of David Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They all became aware. Because the multitude that was coming with Jesus proclaimed his entrance into Jerusalem. Amen. The church will stand up at this moment. Hallelujah. What was your name? Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, we praise you. We thank you. We are thankful for your presence in our midst because the resources that you gave us to enter with your Son in eternity. We thank you for the, our justification in the blood of Jesus because everything you have done for our lives to this point. We plead, Lord, so that in this new year, each one of us may be an instrument in your hands, an instrument of evangelization, and that each one of us may be filled with the Holy Spirit proclaiming the return of the Lord Jesus. Give us, Lord, this means, this power, this authority to proclaim, Lord, to the world that our God is returning. Hallelujah. I want to praise you. Thank you, Lord, because you have trusted this mission to us, Lord. Glorified be your name for your people, for your church, that at this moment recognize, Lord, recognize you, Lord, that has been paying attention to your voice and the fulfillment of your prophecies. Take us home in peace. We ask in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, of our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brethren may, brethren may be seated. If there is anyone visiting us, if you need a, a prayer, a clarification of the, the spiritual gifts or, or the word, remain where you are. Raise your hand. We'll give you the proper assistance. I'd like to remind the church this coming Saturday at 6 p.m., uh, meeting with the women at 7.30, another service of glorification to the name of our God. And Sunday morning, 10.30, Sunday school. Amen. You are all invited to participate and to all the peace of the Lord.